Hi there, it's Pastor Nelson. Welcome to Lesson 8, Hope Grows as God Adopts Me into His Family. We're going to be talking about baptism today, one of the biblical sacraments. We'll talk about that word too, sacraments. Uh, so baptism. At the top of your page, if you have the notes for Lesson 8, it starts with the Bible verse, Romans 5, verse 18. Consequently, just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life to all men. So one trespass, Adam, sinning in the Garden of Eden, brought condemnation, a guilty verdict. The result of one act of righteousness, Jesus, his death and his life, that was justification, not guilty. You are innocent. To who? All people. All right. So um, when Jesus died on the cross, he brought this one act of righteousness. He brought justification. You can write that in your sheet. So uh, this, my drawing isn't, isn't real great. This is supposed to be a treasure chest. It's all the, the wonderful treasures Jesus won for us with his perfect life and his innocent death on the cross. Maybe you can think of some other things Jesus won for us. Justification. You are innocent. You're not guilty. He won forgiveness. Life, now and in heaven. Salvation. We're saved from our sins, from death and hell. Our righteousness. All these kind of things. Jesus won on the cross. But how do those things get to my heart? Jesus won them. How are they helpful and beneficial to me? Does, does everybody go to heaven because Jesus won those things for all people? Well, our next Bible verse, Mark 16, uh, 16 says, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. So not everybody gets this. There has to be faith worked in the heart. Faith has to get these things over to our hearts for them to really help us. Otherwise, if there's no belief, no, no trust, no faith, condemnation. All right? So what does God use to get all these things he won on the cross over to me and you in our hearts? Romans 1 verse 16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. The gospel is the power of God, the good news of what Jesus has done for us on the cross and in his life, the gospel. So, all of these things come to us through faith, through this channel of the gospel. All right. Now, if, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. That's 2 Corinthians 5.17. So if anyone's in Christ, the gospel has done its work, then they are a new creation. They are new. The old is gone. Now their heart is fresh and new. Now they have all these things. Uh, salvation. New life. Forgiveness. Justification. The gospel did a miracle, and it worked that faith in their heart. Over the next couple of weeks, we'll see that the gospel has a couple channels where this power can work. Um, it's kind of like if there was, uh, um, you could think of maybe a, a, uh, an outlet or something like that. Usually maybe there's two plugins on the outlet. We'll actually see there's, there's three plugins, three ways that we can plug into God's power through the gospel, the word, and the sacraments. And then there's two sacraments we'll see. Uh, so what we'll write in here, and we'll explain it in a little bit, are, are these main channels, which can really be broken kind of into three. But the gospel is, comes to us through the word. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Um, and then also the sacraments. So... Um, when you have this gospel in word and sacrament, the ways the gospel comes to our heart, a lot of times we'll call this the means of grace. Means is another word for tools, the tools the Holy Spirit uses to give us his grace. It's the gospel in word and sacraments. 
That's the, the simple but amazing way God does his work. So we ask, what is a sacrament? And I'll give you a definition here, a three-part definition for sacrament. Now, first of all, the word sacrament doesn't appear in this way in the Bible. This is where theologians looked at what the Bible says and then came up with a definition so that they all knew they were talking about the same thing. So some churches define sacraments differently, so you'll have a different number of sacraments. So we just want to be really clear about how we in the Lutheran Church define the word sacrament so that we know what we're talking about when we're saying a sacrament. Number one, a sacrament is a sacred act instituted or started by Jesus. Sacred act instituted by Jesus. Number two, it has visible elements or earthly elements connected to God's word. And number three, it offers, gives, and seals to us the forgiveness of sins, new life, and salvation. All this stuff above. So we'll see the sacraments give all these things to us. So using that definition, there are two sacraments. Baptism and the Lord's Supper. This is the lesson where we're going to learn about baptism and all the strong and powerful stuff that baptism does for us because it's connected with the gospel. We'll see how it brings these things to our hearts. Look forward to seeing you again for the next lesson.